you know, actually commit to these goals, but they fell so big and so out of my reach and out of my comfort zone that I just thought, this is probably impossible. Why am I getting psyched? My name is Dom. I am 33 years old and I live in Sheffield. I've been climbing since I was 26. So that's seven years. So I've been climbing for seven years now. Um, and when I kind of look back at my climbing journey, it's been like from the day when I started climbing. So from the first day when someone took me bouldering, I fell in love with climbing and then it it kind of engulfed me and like very early on I kind of knew I wanted to be an instructor I wanted to climb I was just super super psyched and that kind of so I started bouldering and then dabbled a little bit with sport climbing and then I started track climbing and I think this is where for me everything changed and I just fell in love with track climbing um, I think it's probably my favorite bit of climbing now as well um, and I had a period of my life where um, I was really expanding. So I kind of was, when I was, when I was first learning how to track climb, the hardest route that I climbed was probably a severe because I was learning. So I didn't want to jump on something hard and, you know, hurt myself before I really knew how to place gear. Um, and I remember kind of going through this phase where I just became so hungry to, um, to push myself and to find kind of what I'm capable of which resulted in this like unbelievable psych. Um, and I went from climbing a severe to, you know, jumping on an E2 and, and successfully doing a couple of E2s, which was amazing for me because I never thought I could do that. Um, so I had this amazing time in my life, which made me feel super alive. And I was really happy with my climbing. My psych was through the roof really. Um, and I thought that's how it always will be. Um, and then I had a bit of a, shitty personal time so just a lot of stressful thing going on in my life which resulted in my climbing kind of going on a back burner because I had more important things to you know to worry about than climbing and slowly what started happening was that when I was climbing instead of looking at looking at roots and seeing it as challenges I almost started to quiver from the like from fear really um, and that was incredibly frustrating and it was not going away and it really really affected my psyche and my confidence and you know it got to a point where I really started to question whether, whether I want to continue climbing which is an unbelievable thought because I love climbing so much but the frustration was so big that I really started to think I don't know if climbing is for me which, which is quite upsetting um, sorry. Yeah, it's, it's a funny thing climbing because, you know, it's just a, it's just a sport and, you know, in the grand scheme of things, there are more important things, but I feel like it plays such a big part in my life that I really need to give it energy and focus that it deserves. So as I was, as I was in this kind of quite a negative, bad place with, with my climbing and really questioning whether this is something that I want to do, um, I thought about all the things that got me really psyched and what I would like to achieve. And actually I found that there was, you know, a few things or actually quite a lot of things, but few things in, like specifically, which really stirred quite a lot of motivation and psych in me. And when I really kind of dug deeper and I started to look around, like what gave me that like high level of motivation, I've identified a few few things and that's what led me to kind of set, setting some goals. So I've decided to set some goals, um, some crazy out there goals, way, way out of my comfort zone um, just to, just to see if I can do it, just to see if it's possible. I think every climber has this, you read something or you see a photo or a video of somebody doing something 
and it stirs this motivation and psych and drive and you, and you look at that person doing the climb and you think I want to be there and for me that that was three particular things I mean I get psyched all the time when I see new things but these three things kind of kept coming back to me but they were such huge goals that it took me about two years to really say out loud and then probably another six months to kind of make this and you know actually commit to these goals but they felt so big and so out of my reach and out of my comfort zone that I just thought this is probably impossible why am I getting psyched and then I thought why not try it so I'm 33 years old and I've just set these life climbing goals these outlandish huge goals and I just want to see if it's possible so the goals are number one is to climb the quarryman which is an e8 7a uh, trad route in the slay quarries number two is climbing el cap so i don't know which route yet on el cap but a route free climb not a climb and number three is to climb careless torque which is an 8a boulder problem in the peak district not far from where we are today so these are my three crazy outlandish out there goals. The Quarrymen is an amazing route in the Slay Quarries. Um, first climb by Johnny Dawes, I think it was 1986. And I watched the video of him climbing the groove pitch and I was just in love. And I remember thinking, I wanna know what it feels like to be out there doing that. And yeah, it's just, it's so inspiring. And at the time when, I, when I've seen it, I didn't know how hard it was. So an E87A is, um, yeah, it's scary, hard grade. Um, but yeah, it's super inspiring. I feel like El Cap is the pinnacle for all climbers. It's such an unbelievable piece of rock. And I've been to Yosemite and I remember just looking at El Cap and I was just so overwhelmed, just just looking at it. And I, I think it's, if you can climb El Cap, you are a solid climber. I watched Emily Harrington send Golden Gate and I was so inspired how hard she tried and the fact that she came from a competition background and then didn't really have any big world experience and then a few years later she just sent it and yeah I just watched it and I think that was the defining moment for El Cap for me I thought I want to see if I can give it this many beans careless talk I've watched Mina s sending it and it's a boulder problem not far maybe 15 minutes from where I live and I always walk past and I think this is just stunning, such a beautiful problem. And when I watched her climbing it, I again had that feeling of, wow, I really wanna see what that feels like. And um, it's super scary because it's so high. I don't know, it must be like seven or eight meters or something. It's yeah, really high, but it just, it looks sick. <laughs> At the moment, I've climbed up to E2 on trad and I've climbed up to 6C spore climbing and I've bouldered probably 6B but I haven't really tried that many routes so when you when you kind of look at where I am now and the goals that I set it is quite yeah quite a distance but yeah let's see how it goes do I think it's possible um, I feel like there's a small part of me which thinks it's possible, maybe. And I feel like if I thought there is no chance ever to achieve this, I don't think I would try it. So, so maybe I'm a bit optimistic that maybe if I, if I am methodical about it and if I put enough work in and if I'm not necessarily bothered about how long it will take me. So, you know, it could take me five years it could take me 10 years it could take me 15 years i feel like it could be possible why not 
So I think the hardest thing will be to pace myself with the psych and motivation. So not throw everything into it in the next few months and then, you know, in a year I'm kind of done because I'm tired. So, so I want to kind of like give enough that I actually give myself a good chance of doing it, but also not so much that I just can't sustain it. What drives me? I am not quite sure what, what is the thing that drives me. I think I am naturally quite an energetic, psyched, motivated person. But I, when I was younger, I used to play elite table tennis um, until I was 18. And it was not a sport that I really chosen. It was something that my parents chose for me. And I ended up um, playing on quite a high level. I was an elite athlete. I was a European champion um, in doubles when I was 14. So, so I feel that is quite an achievement, but it was never something that I chose. It was something that I just did. And, and it was almost as if I was like a robot performing on really high level but my heart and my mind wasn't really in it. And then when I quit table tennis and I went through this phase of discovery, which most people have in their 20s, for me was having this negative relationship with sport. And I was very much in the mindset of, I don't want to set any goals. And I was really quite not in a good place with exercise. And then climbing changed all that because it, it suddenly showed me that actually sport can be really fun and even trying hard can be really fun. I feel that I have a lot of energy and unfinished business with sport and I just feel that this is maybe the right way for me to do it. And I know I'm 33 and you know, most things are going against me, but yeah, I just feel like I wanna give it a good crack, but this time on my own terms, when my heart is definitely in it. Will I be disappointed if I don't achieve my goal? I feel that if I give it the beans and I give it everything I've got and I don't make it, I don't think I'll be that disappointed. I'm sure it will, you know, hurt a bit if I put a lot of effort in and, you know, I won't be able to do something that I set out to do. But at the end of the day, I love climbing, I love training, I lo love doing the physical kind of, you know, weights and pull-ups and things like that. And it's just an excuse really to go climbing. So I feel that if I lose my focus and I get sidetracked, I will be disappointed. But if I give it my everything and I don't make it, well then, you know, you gave it your best.